Hello, I'm Mike, and welcome back to Bitfixer. It has been way too long since the last video. Uh, life just got really busy and just wasn't able to do any videos for a while, but I'm back and hopefully on a more regular schedule. Today, I want to talk a little bit about a new project, which uh, doesn't have a name yet, but basically I want to create a new retro-style computer uh, using only modern parts. This is going to be kind of a development diary piece by piece as I add capabilities. You can kind of follow along with me and we'll see where it goes. And what do I mean by retro style? Well, here's three examples. Nothing super specific about these three, but it's a relatively simple machine. You turn it on and something happens. You can usually do something fun like play a sound or draw something on the screen without too much effort and without having to install anything. I'm sure it means something different to different people, what retro style computer means, but for me, it's just something simple and easy to use and just kind of fun to use as well. And as for what I'm going to, how I'm going to build this computer, well, I'm going to use a uh, ESP32 S3 processor. Probably not the newest, but it's one of the newer processors in the uh, Espressif uh, ESP32 line. ESP32 being what I'm using on Pet Disk Max here in module form. But what we're going to cover today is the video output and then other things like sound, being able to connect a keyboard, hopefully a USB keyboard, since PS2 keyboards are harder to come by now, storage, figure it out as we go along. And just wanted to note that with this project, I'm not really attempting to recreate something like a Raspberry Pi, which I would call a uh, modern computer with a lot of convenient interfacing options, nor am I trying to uh, emulate any specific 8-bit computer. But what I am trying to do is use this 32-bit microcontroller to simulate an 8-bit CPU along with most of the hardware in the system. And then it's going to be boot up to basic type experience or something similar where you just turn the thing on and it immediately comes up to an interface where you can run basic programs or play games or do whatever you like. But for today, we're going to look at how do you get video out from an ESP32 S3 microcontroller. Start off with the design. I'm going to be using this board here, which is the Pro S3 board from uh, Unexpected Maker. And it's a nice development slash breakout board that uses the ESP32 S3 chip. And on this one, you get a lot of the GPIO pins and all the interfaces you want, I2C, SPI coming out on the pins. So it's pretty convenient. And you also have eight megabytes of, I think this is the chip, uh, eight megabytes of SPI connected RAM on here, which is very useful because you can uh, do all sorts of stuff with eight megabytes on a microcontroller. On the chip itself, you're very constrained with uh, memory at least constrained by modern standards. I think it's something in the 512K range. You're gonna see as we go along that that proves to be a bottleneck for some methods of outputting video on this chip. So what are some of the options we have in getting video out of the ESP32 S3? Uh, one option could be HDMI. That would be convenient considering how many displays use it. But from what I, from what I gather, the uh, HDMI protocol is a serial protocol and we just wouldn't be able to achieve the pixel clock that is needed by HDMI. I'm just putting that one aside for now. Uh, what about composite video? Well, uh, we definitely know that the, uh, the ESP32 can do this. There's been some projects that have gotten this to work. I didn't really want to go that route with this project just because a composite video is an analog signal, tends to be noisy, and also it's region specific. That brings us to good old VGA, oldie but a goodie. It's widely available for displays and a fairly straightforward display protocol. It'll work pretty well for what we're trying to do. Just a very quick overview of what a VGA signal really looks like. You have a few relevant signals. One of them is called V-Sync. And what this does is you have a pulse that happens once for each frame of video. And in between the times of this V-Sync pulse and this V-Sync pulse you have your, um, in the case of say 640 by 480, you have 480 lines here. And then within one line, you have another pulse called H-Sync. And then that indicates the beginning of each line. And within this time period, you have R, G, and B. These are actually analog signals. So within the time period of one, of, between these two H-Sync signals, you'll have a varying analog signal, uh, red, green, and blue. And then this signal is sampled according to a clock called the pixel clock. And so at each, each time the pixel clock goes off, you look at the voltage on the red, green, and blue lines, and that indicates what color should show up on the display. So on the ESP32, the, uh, the regular ESP32, not the S3, there are actually at least two 
uh, VGA drivers that exist already. There's one by BitLooney on GitHub here, BitLooney ESP32lib, and there's also FabGL over here. And uh, both of these uh, look pretty interesting. They, they use the I2S uh, interface, which is an interface I just learned about, which is Inter-IC Sound, I believe. Uh, it's a protocol designed to transmit um, digital sound between integrated circuits, uh, but it's also hackable enough that you can use extra digital lines to transmit more information. And uh, in, the, in both of these cases, that I2S interface has been modified to use the relevant signals for VGA. I attempted to build the, the BitLooney one at first on the ESP32 S3. Uh, unfortunately though, the, the S3 chip has enough changes to that I2S interface that uh, it doesn't build, at least not with fairly heavy modification. And uh, that was just not something I was really uh, looking to do at that moment. And I actually never got the chance to to attempt anything with the FabGL driver, but this one does look pretty cool because it has, in addition to video, it has video and sound and uh, interfacing for PS2 keyboards, as well as a bunch of emulators and stuff like that. So this is, definitely check out these, uh, these projects at some point if you want to do stuff on an ESP32. Uh, but for the S3, um, I had to try a different direction. So after reading through the documentation for uh, the ESP32 S3, it turns out that uh, this chip, and I think some of the some of the later ones, maybe the S2 as well, have an RGB LCD driver, which is basically designed for LCD panels that have RGB data coming in in either 8-bit or 16-bit parallel. It turns out they also use timing very similar to VGA. They, actually, they also have V-Sync, they also have uh, H-Sync, and this supports pixel clocks that are within range uh, that VGA requires. So, so that's the method we're going to try. To start off with, I'll wire up a VGA connector with the necessary signals. We just need H-Sync, V-Sync, and the three color lines, R, G, and B. Uh, to start off with, we're going to try for 3-bit VGA, which just means that the red, green, and blue lines will be connected directly to one of the output pins on the uh, S3. And that just means that uh, for each of those, we'll have only on or off, which will give us eight colors total. Eventually, we can wire up 8-bit VGA, which just means that eight total pins will be connected through a resistor ladder, giving analog signals for each of the RG and B signals. Fortunately, there is some sample code available for the RGB LCD driver, which I'm looking at here. And according to the docs, you just need to enter in the timing parameters for the different signals, which you can look up for your chosen resolution of VGA. So I went ahead and did that, and first attempt was uh, not successful, and we had a crash. It turned out to be not finding the PS RAM chip, the external SPI RAM. So I had to go ahead and configure that properly was in the wrong mode. And after going back to check, we saw that we had not changed the pixel clock to match the 640 by 480 VGA resolution. Once that's fixed, we actually do have an image, not exactly what we want, so obviously there's a problem. So let's talk a little bit about how the RGB LCD driver actually works. You have the option of allocating frame buffers either in internal memory it's on the S3 chip itself, or it can be in PSRAM which is memory that's in a separate chip that's connected to the CPU via the SPI interface. So you have a trade-off there. The internal RAM is fast, but is very limited in size. Well, let me just say, what, what is a frame buffer? A frame buffer is a chunk of memory that holds a picture that then gets written out to a screen. And in the case of VGA, it's writing one byte at a time over the data lines that you've specified. So the internal memory, you're actually space constrained enough that you can only allocate one buffer and uh, that's only at lower resolutions. In SPI RAM, you're not very constrained because you can have eight megabytes, but you have a speed constraint. But then we saw this, this option called bounce buffer. If you turn bounce buffers on, then we get closer to a clean image. It's still not quite there, but something obviously changed. So this sample code was using a library called LVGL to draw a diagram to the screen. So I removed that for simplicity and instead just directly drew a uh, blue image into memory and that, it actually looks like we have a stable VGA image on the screen. And after that, I changed it so that every line is a different color. So we can see how that looks. All right, well, we get this. This doesn't look like it's quite, it's not quite working as expected. Uh, I'm gonna double check to see if that's something I did or if there is a problem with how fast the uh, PSRAM is able to write out the data into the bounce buffer. 
So something I noticed was that we were still in 16-bit color mode, which meant that it used two bytes per pixel instead of one byte if you're in 8-bit color mode. So I switched it to 8-bit, and we actually get a uh, working image on the screen with alternating color stripes, which means that using the bounce buffers method, we're actually able to draw out the pixels fast enough to meet the pixel clock for our selected VGA resolution. So this is what happens if you turn the bounce buffers option off. And you can see over here, there's a tear here down the side of the screen. And uh, there's some garbage on the bottom. So I believe what's happening here is that when you're trying to read directly from the SPI RAM, it just can't keep up. So uh, the timing is off here. Um, so I think that the bounce buffers is the way to go. I just want to show you here some detail about the pixel clock. So the, the uh, actual pixel clock frequency for the VGA 60, 640 by 480 at 60 hertz is 25.175 megahertz. And if you look over here at the screen, hopefully you'll be able to see it, but that line is not very straight. You see it's kind of noisy and it's wiggling around left and right. Um, and I suspect what's happening there is that the CPU is not able to generate the uh, exact frequency that we want. And I know that that frequency is derived from either a 160 megahertz or a 240 megahertz oscillator on board. So I'm just going to try adjusting the frequency to something, uh, something like 25 megahertz, which is close to the nominal pixel frequency, but should be a lot cleaner because the oscillators w should be able to get a lot closer to the real frequency. So let's try that out. Well, I changed that frequency to 25 megahertz and Hopefully you can see it. The line is much cleaner there. So we'll give it a try on some different resolutions and see how well it, uh, it keeps up. So I'm going to move forward a little bit. We saw that using the bounce buffers method, we were able to get a stable VGA picture because the internal memory where the bounce buffers are located is fast enough to be able to DMA out the uh, pixel information to the VGA screen. Um, so I have taken everything from the initialization code, I made it, made it my own VGA class here. And uh, we have uh, options for different resolutions. Um, you can go up to 800 by 600. Uh, and that the constraint really is the pixel clock. The pixel clock for 800 by 600 is 40 megahertz. And above that, really, the oscillator is uh, not able to uh, generate um, pixel clocks faster than that stably. So the driver just fails when you try to do that. Uh, so 800 by 600, 640 by 480, 640 by 400, and 640 by 350. And uh, we have all the initialization stuff in here, uh, the timing information. We actually don't allocate a frame buffer at all in the driver. We do it ourselves, and then we get a callback when the buffer needs to be filled here. It's a bounce event callback. And what I do in here is I read from the uh, SPI memory or the main memory, if you have enough of it. And uh, you, on the fly, you copy pixels into the bounce buffer as you're going along. And that lets you have control over how you're gonna draw pixels and update the screen. Then you can actually scale down the pixels. So if you're, you have a native resolution of 640 by 480, you could draw at 320 by 240, for example, with each pixel mapping to four screen pixels. So let's take a look at some demos I put together here uh, showing GA drawing on the device and uh, we'll go from there. And I just I just hooked up the uh, red or the green and blue lines as well and separated out the colors so uh, those individual colors are working right now this is just a three bit uh, VGA with just uh, on or off for red green and blue lines but if we want the full range we're gonna have to make a resistor ladder so we can get uh, some analog values out. So now we're gonna set up a full 8-bit VGA by getting all eight outputs from the device and then we're going to go run it through a resistor ladder so we can generate red, green, and blue analog values for each of those pins. So after adding a whole mess of resistors here, we have the 8-bit VGA going on and we can even display a bitmap here. This is a uh, dithered 256 color image, this computer right here, and uh, looks pretty good. It looks like the bright colors are a little blown out so this possibly some adjustment that I should do on the resistor values. But yeah, pretty cool. We have a uh, 8-bit 256 color VGA coming out of the ESP32-S3 now. To make things easier to experiment going forward, I had some 
breakout boards made up for 8-bit VGA, so you can have 8-bit digital input or 3-bit RGB, H-sync, B-sync, and ground, and then there's a bunch of resistors on the bottom to make the resistor ladder. And I'll go ahead and build one of these and just make sure it works. Got it hooked up and running a 3-bit VGA demo and it is in fact working. So that should be convenient to have this breakout to uh, build on this further. So quick update, I was trying to add an SD card to the, uh, to the S3 and I expected this, this to be a very quick thing. Just connect the SPI lines to the uh, breakout board, but it turns out to be a little more difficult. I'm getting timeout errors uh, then Saw some indications that you needed 10K pull-ups on the SD lines, tried that, but still getting the same timeout. So I'm uh, gonna look into this further, maybe look at it with the scope, see if the signals are looking correct on the SPI lines, but not quite sure yet. So at long last, I finally got this working. I can't, really don't wanna talk about how long I spent on this, but uh, I think in the end, it was probably just a bad connection in the breadboards that I kept hitting over and over without realizing. But, you know, I tried the SP32 board, I went back to this, I tried changing the pins and that wasn't working. I put pull-ups and took them out. Uh, but finally, um, once we recreated, once we got it to work on the SP32 board, then I just like moved it over to the other one and yeah, it started working. So good news, uh, kind of frustrating, but um, now we have storage attached. Okay, so after hooking up the SD card, I discovered that this little monitor that I'd been using decided to just die <laughs> at this point. Uh, just try to turn it on and it won't stay on. So I had to use the, connect it up to the larger monitor here. But now we can see a little demo of some video playing on the S3. This is a little video of a toy train going around the track. And right now this is dithered down to three bit VGA. So you only have uh, red, green, blue, uh, and then the, combinations thereof so basically one bit per uh per color channel and uh yeah you can see it's, it's kind of interesting um the frame rate is a little bit low the bottleneck right now is definitely the sd card how fast we can read frames from this it's not compressed or anything and uh, let's take a look at what this uh, looks like in 8-bit video and this is the same video in 8-bit mode so we have uh, eight total bits for red green and blue i believe the uh Blue channel has, yeah, the blue channel has two bits and the others have three. And the frame rate is about half what it was on the three bit. This is about running about eight frames per second. The other one is running at 15. And again, that's the uh, bottleneck is the reading uncompressed frames from the SD card right now. And that can be improved if we read, connect the SD card in, uh, I believe it's called MMC mode instead of SPI, but we'll look into that in the future. And in the meantime, if we want to get a much better frame rate, we have the option for one bit video. And this VGA library is up at bitfixer slash ESP32S3 VGA on GitHub. So check that out if you like. I also found out that during the uh, making of this video, uh, BitLooney has updated uh, that driver as well. So you can check that one out. Uh, but this is an option if you want to use uh, VGA with the uh, ESP32S3. Well, I hope you enjoyed part one of this development diary on this uh, new retro style computer. And I uh, hope to see you again on the next one where we'll add some more features to this, probably a USB keyboard. Maybe we'll add a, a simulated CPU and add those kind of components and make it do something. So uh, thanks very much. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to uh, like it and subscribe to the channel and there'll be more coming soon. Bye-bye.